Sam Boingen, we're not even on his safari bus yet. What is he thinking? <laughs> boy. The safari bus just pulled up and he's boinging already. They haven't even loaded you yet, you monkey butt. What are you thinking? Okay. All right, buddy. Thank you. Uh oh. Here goes Sam. I think we go first, don't we? We bring him in. Four. Okay, then she's getting you there, buddy. Oh, Sam's already giggling. I'll have you come in next, my friend. Okay, and Carrie's got to come in. Uh-oh, there's <laughs> Sam. It's a little hard to maneuver in here. It's kind of tight. Yeah. There you go, okay. She's got it now. She's got it now. Good job, Carrie. That looks perfect because I have the brakes on. Let me put the brakes on on the side. Yep, set his brakes. <laughs> Alrighty. I got that strap for you, my friend. Um, Does this have any medical equipment in it? No. Can we go ahead and take it off for yeah, me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not John, everybody. Kara Booney means welcome aboard. There we go, so Sam. If you all look above you, you'll see an animal spawning guide that will help you identify some of the animals that we see out here today. Now, we're not going to see all of them, but we usually have pretty good luck seeing most of them. What's her name? What's her name? If we have any smaller adventurers, they're welcome to sit in your lap. Tell you but please make sure they remain fully down. seated and in the same She's room Caitlin. the entire time. Caitlin. Hi. Caitlin. So them up and the animals hi, Sam. Better. Nice to meet you. Pass them mm -hmm. to our say, say hi, Caitlin. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a little bit excited. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna scare the animals. You keep that up. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You're shake your chair. Shake it like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was forgot that you all had to sit on the outside. Okay. We're gonna put something in. There's a hook right here, man. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's hard to find the hook. Yeah. Nope. Tried to paint them silver, but they kind of rub off. Yeah, we painted them silver, but it rubs off over time. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. And then I'll do it on the other silver hook. <laughs> She's strapping you down. Can't have you bounce around as far as take it off with the giraffes. Okay, and then we can put it back down once I get done. Hey, 
Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Just leave it up, honey, so it's up when we come back so they can reach to get them out. Yeah. And then we'll give it like a nice little wiggle. I'll make sure that we're in there nice and good. <laughs> 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 Yeah, more fun there than five minutes than you've had all the. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin. There we go, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> You're a nut. <laughs> Caitlin, strap you down. <laughs> tell her, tell her, thank you. Good manners. All right. As a Jason Award, and that means thank you in Swahili. And as we say here in Harambe, Twin Day, that means let's go. Oh, Hello, everybody. My name is Ashley. I'll be your safari driver for today. Now, I do ask that you all remain seated and keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. That means you too, Sam. <laughs> yeah, that means you too. <laughs> You all are more than welcome to take pictures and videos, but turn those cameras on sport or live mode. That way your pictures don't turn out blurry. Keep a tight hold on any loose items. What? Anything that's dropped no. off the side of the truck can probably be retrieved. I got a video. I got a video of that whole thing. What condition it will be returned You'll watch you. that till if you do happen to drop something falls off, the off side, your iPad. No worries. Just let me know. Over here on our right, <laughs> there Caitlin is a sign say? that says you are now entering Let's the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Strap you down. She had to redo it. You were bouncing around. On that around, sign, that right. is a sable antelope. They're the emblem here at our reserve. Hopefully we see one out there today, and if we do, I'll tell you why they are the emblem. But right now, we're going to start our adventure off in the Little Atari Forest. This is a densely vegetated area, and a lot of these animals like to use the plants as camouflage. So Ooh. keep your eyes peeled. We'll see what we can find. Oh, there's okay. one walker right there. Up here on our left, we're gonna see some light brown antelopes. These are called the greater kudu. And then over here on our oh, right, we're gonna see an okapi. Now people often think that the okapi oh, are related to the zebra because of those stripes on their legs, but they're actually the oldest known relative to the giraffe. And we can tell that by looking at the shape of their skull. So the reason the okapi have those strokes on their legs <laughs> is because that mimics the Just shadows the sunlight makes as it shines through the bushes. And that helps them break up their silhouette. They also have scent glands in their hooves. So when they travel, they can leave a trail for the other okapi to follow. <laughs> now the greater kudu that we saw across from the okapi, we can tell that they are female because they do not have horns. Ah, they can't run very quickly, and they also don't have the best stamina, so they rely on their over ability here. to jump, so which far. they can do incredibly well. Up I think to the eight hippos are up in high. here, aren't they? On our left, we're seeing a black rhino. Oh, He's there's a black rhino. There yep, sleeping my plane right off. <laughs> up against that wall back there. He weighs approximately 3,000 pounds. Already. He has a pointed upper lip wow. so he can grab and pull leaves off of branches and eat. He okay. can charge up to 40 or 35 miles per hour. Holy and he cow. has an excellent sense of hearing and smell. What? <laughs> up ahead a little bit further on our left, we're gonna see two black and white birds. They're called the saddle-billed storks. They may not look like it, but they stand about five feet tall, and they have a wingspan of approximately Are you trying to call the birds? Feet, which is about the same width as the canopy that's above your head. That's them right there, huh? They okay. also don't really vocalize, so in order to communicate with one another, they will rattle their bills. 
The only animals that live in the Acheri forest use these plants as food and shelter. You're boinging on so the safari. But we use paper products responsibly and recycle when we can because that helps ensure their habitats stay balanced. Okay. Now we're heading into the Safi River. This is an aquatic ecosystem. It's home to our friends, the pink fat pelicans. They get their name because during mating season, the feathers on their backs turn pink. Huh. Both the male and the female care for their egg. They use their feet to help keep it warm. Wow. And they are one of the only pelicans that nest in trees. So deforestation actually greatly impacts them. So again, remember, reduce, reuse, recycle, and replenish. Okay. Now they use the pouch that's on their bill almost like a fishing net. So they'll swoop down, scoop up a fish, drain out the water, and then swallow the fish completely whole. Oh, oh. They also use that pouch to help keep them cool. So obviously birds don't sweat. Bird so bear. when they put water and then drain it out of their pouch, water droplets are left behind on the skin. So they'll ripple their pouch so a wind passes over the water droplets, and that's what helps keep them cool. Now, if we oh, look over here by these waterfalls on our left-hand side, poking up over there, we're going to see the Nile hippos. Contrary to popular belief, they can't actually swim. Right there. They just walk along the river floor. And then... We're also seeing the Nile crocodiles. Oh, Nile crocodiles. They have one of the most powerful jaws in the animal kingdom. Wow, Sam. But despite that incredibly powerful jaw, the mothers will take their eggs and put them in their mouths and then roll them around. They do that to help their eggs hatch. They usually only eat one What's meal that? per week. But when they do, they consume nearly half of their body weight in that sure. single meal. So in one sitting, they'll eat watch approximately it when you get 250 oh, pounds of food. Oh, Or just slid down. Okay. Now our next stop is the savanna. Okay. And as we come around this turn on our right hand side, we're going to see a huge tree. It's called the baobab tree. It's native to the savanna. Right, there we go. The baobab tree's nickname is the tree of life. It gets that nickname because during the rainy seasons, it harvests all of that water and then stores it in its trunk. So during the dry seasons, when the animals are searching for water, they can go up to the baobab tree, rip off a piece the of the bark, tree. eat it, yeah. and get hydrated that way. They also remain leafless for about nine months out of the year, and that's so the leaves don't take up too much of the water that is stored inside of the trunk. As we come down around this turn on our okay, right, be looking for hang out in the shade over there, those are the springbok, the small light brown antelopes. Their size makes them a little unsuspecting, but they are in the top 10 quickest land animals in the animal kingdom. They can wow. reach speeds anywhere between 50 and 60 miles per hour. The they get their name, get Springbok, the from their ability to spring upwards six feet and out 13 feet. Wow. That is springy. That's a boy now, Sam. Up here on our boing. left, we're going to see the African painted dogs. They're laying down in their den. So this yeah, cave over here. Look at all the birds. There's also a couple more back here between the bamboo and this big rock. They're kind of laying behind that small tree. Yeah, so right African painted dogs have both a male and a female <laughs> alpha. The female. Is the <laughs> like, check me out, ladies. Check me out. <laughs> Look at my feathers. <laughs> they have about an They're right there, laying down, right. taking a little nap. So they truly are a power couple. Wow. <laughs> they get their name, African painted dog, from their unique coats. Both the color and the pattern help them camouflage themselves. What we got there? Oh, zebras. Also on our left, we're seeing the Hartman's Mountain Zebras, and then way back there, kind of behind those bushes, we are seeing the Sable Antelope as well. I'm going to tell you about the Hartman's oh, Mountain Sable, Zebras way back first. There. So people often wonder, are they black with white stripes or white with black stripes? Ooh, good question. Well, we can answer that question by looking at the color of their noses. The Hartman's Mountain Zebras specifically have a black nose, so that means they are black with white stripes. Ooh. Their striping patterns are completely unique to draft, them, Sam. just like our fingerprints are unique to boing. us. 
<laughs> the and when their foals are born, the they'll actually oh, yeah. memorize the look, striping pattern right there, of their look. mother right here. so they can pick her out in a right group, next and they'll only nurse from her. Look. There he is, Get right over really your shoulder. a really close look at this Maasai giraffe on our right. Oh Just make sure we're God. fully seated the entire time, please. Wow. So, looks like we're going to see another one up here on our oh, left. another one up here. Giraffes are one of the tallest animals. Are you going to say anything to them? They can grow to be anywhere say between hey, 18 and 20 feet tall. They usually only sleep for about 30 minutes a day. And they don't sleep laying down. They'll stay standing or they'll kneel. Another way we know the okapi that we saw in the Ateri forest is related to the giraffe. That's nuts. They both have this thing called a prehensile tongue, which just means they can reach their tongues out super far, wrap it around a branch like a finger, and put the leaves on the tree trunk. Something's on there. Their tongues are anywhere What's between that? 17 and 24 inches in length, which is about the same length as your arm but from your something. elbow to the tip of your middle finger couple more giraffes over here on our left and then over here on our right we're seeing the eland one of the largest species of antelope at their shoulder they stand six feet tall and from a standing position they don't even need a run and go oh, this one's coming to see us up to eight feet off of the ground this one's gonna come say hi hey buddy what's up she is gonna cross in front of us real quick Say hi. Oh. Say hi. She is coming right towards oh, us. Come say hi. Oh, changed her mind. Okay. Changed her mind. <laughs> look at that, Sam. Came right up to say hi to you. Super close look at her. We're also going to see the wildebeests over here on our right. <laughs> Their name is Afrikaans. Wildebeest. Wildebeest. <laughs> Approximately 1.2 million wildebeests will migrate anywhere between wow, 500 and 1,000 miles in a single year. Other than humans, yeah, they're the yeah. largest mammals that live in dense Yeah, they trample Mufasa. So at night, when they sleep, they lay side by side in horizontal lines. <laughs> Dirty dog. So if they needed to get up and run quickly, they could do so without bumping into okay, one another. Okay, Sammy. What are you thinking so far? And and the the same same that giraffe I mentioned them at the right very beginning. They are the emblem here at the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. They were chosen as the emblem because they are very well known for never backing down, regardless of what they are faced with. So they stand up for themselves, just like we stand up for the animals that we have here on the reserve. Just like the African painted dogs, they also have both a male and a female alpha. The male is their primary alpha, but the female is the one who will dictate the movement of their group. Now, if we look back here in this left-hand corner, we're going to see the tops of some mandrel yeah. walking around back there. They're one There's of the one sitting right there. Monkeys. Just kind of watching us in the shadows. <laughs> they have pouches in their cheeks so they can keep some snacks handy. And the male's the one that was sitting on that rock. They have red and blue colors on their bodies, primarily their backside and their noses. Those colors get brighter the more excited they get. Ah. And way back here on our right hand side, we're seeing an African elephant. There it is. Way back there. Look at your right, there's a big elephant back there. When you there. see elephants flapping their ears, they are doing that to cool themselves down. It creates a wind that cools down the blood vessels that are on the back side of their ears, and that helps them lower their body temperature up to 15 degrees. Wow. That's a lot. They have incredibly sensitive skin. So they'll take dirt, mud, and sand and fling it onto their bodies with their trunks because that acts as a natural sunscreen. There you go. It's actually a common misconception that elephants can drink through their trunks like a straw. So it does kind of work that way, but more so like when you dip a straw into a glass of water, put your finger over the end and then pull it out, the water will stay inside of the straw. Then so elephants can mouth. suck water up into their trunks and hold it in there, but then they just pour it into their mouths and drink that way. Uh -huh. Their trunks hold up to five gallons of water. Holy cow. They drink about 42 gallons oh, of water. there's a little day. elephant. Seen a couple more elephants on our left. Now the savanna is a really fragile ecosystem. 
Oh, and it often requires there. animals to migrate right in search of yeah. food and water. Oh, right here. But something else that forced specifically the mandrel and the African elephants to migrate was when their habitats were destroyed by people mining for this metal called coltan, which is used yeah. to make electronics. Yeah. So it's super important that we recycle our electronics whenever we're finished with them. When the elephants were migrating in search of a new place to call home, they found themselves in the middle of some farmland in Kenya. But unfortunately, wow, right they there. trampled through all of the farmers' crops. Wow. So in an effort to make sure this didn't happen again, researchers here discovered that elephants are afraid of the buzzing sound that bees make. Oh, see so the, see the, the little bridge back the there? Bees That's project, when we did that walking with the elephants. That's where we stood. Fences. So they put these fences up around That's where we got to be. Crops, and that told the That's how close we were to them. That's so cool. Way. Once the crops grew back, the farmers could sell and consume them. There's another they one of those trees sell right and there. Consume the honey that the honeybees make. This is excellent for the honeybee population as well. We don't like bees. Also on our left, we're seeing the greater flamingos. Ah, look They're at all the these pink flamingos, buddy. And the lightest yep, pink right to your left there. Flamingos. People often think of the joint that's on their leg is their knee, but it's actually their ankle. What? That's nice. Just, the bone that extends what? from that is their foot. Oh, and so it attaches foot's to the, the whole four thing, toes, huh? three of which are webbed. Huh. A group of flamingos is called a flamboyant. And they get that pink color from the beta carotene that's in the brine shrimp they eat. Huh. They like brine shrimp, Sammy. Did you know that? Yeah. All right, we are traveling deeper into the savannah. Oh man, look at that. And over here on our left, we're seeing the wow. white rhinos. White rhino. Now, obviously, these rhinos are not actually white. They are gray. We call them white rhinos because of our misinterpretation of the Afrikaans word fight, which means wide. And that's talking about the shape of their mouths. It's flat and rectangular. That shape helps them graze. They weigh anywhere between four and 5,000 pounds. And their horns are made out of keratin, just like our hair and fingernails. If we look way back there on our right hand side, we're going to catch a quick glimpse of some ostriches. We'll probably see them again here in just yeah. a little bit. So, right now, we're going to land I've never all seen them all together. And the name of that game is Spot. That one looks like cheetah. it's uh, murder, the little one. Oh, Spot now, the the cheetahs can be a little bit difficult to see because of their spots. They allow them to blend in with their surroundings. I hill? see one she Yeah, good Right eye. there, yeah, right there in the hill. So along with the springbok that we saw earlier, the cheetahs are another one of the quickest land animals. They can reach speeds up to 70 miles per hour, but they can 70, go zero wow. to 60 in three seconds. While they are quick, they actually don't maintain that speed for long. It's usually just a couple hundred yards. Sitting there with his head up. They are one of the only cats that is a daytime hunter. They have black lines on their faces that help redirect the glare of the sun right out of their eyes so they can see Oh yeah, right there. If you think about right how they oh, put black lines right on their faces, it works the exact Good catching them, Mom. Mom's catching all the cheetah over here. What do you see, Sam? Now we're coming up on some rocks called Kopi. They kind of jut up out of the savanna. Surprise lane. There are animals that like to lay on top of the kopi, though they do heat up throughout the day, so sometimes in the afternoons they'll find a little bit of a cooler yeah. place to go. But other animals still like to hang out around the kopi. And we are going to see those ostriches again up here on our right hand side. They're hanging out near that green truck because they know where the snacks are. <laughs> That's where they like to stay. They are one of the largest birds. Oh, we're gonna see the white rhinos again. Oh, white here rhinos again. Right yeah. So the ostriches, the ostriches are one of the largest the birds. They are flightless, but they can run up to 40 miles per hour. They can live up to 40 years of age, and their eggs take 40 days to hatch. They're really into the 40s. <laughs> their eggs weigh approximately three pounds a piece. 
wow. is about equivalent to two dozen chicken eggs. Holy cow. Do you believe that, Sam? Are you bouncing around pretty good? All right, we're gonna see the warthogs on our left. They're hanging out over it's in the Bumba. shade. <laughs> They're one of the largest burrowing animals. They'll dig their burrows and then back into them. They leave their tusks sticking out for protection. Just like an elephant, their tusks are made out of ivory. Okay. They love to roll around in the mud. It helps keep them cool, but it also keeps the bugs oh, off of the them. there's the ostriches again. A little bit of a closer look on our right at the ostriches. Look, and our there. rhinos again. Oh, those are huge. There's a lot and of rhinos. Surprisingly, warthogs can run up to 35 miles per hour. Wow. That's the exact fast. same speed that the rhinos can charge. No wonder why Pumba got away in the Lion King. Now we're heading up to the warden's post. The warden lives on the outer edge of the reserve, and he and his team likes to care for Nigerian dwarf goats. Ah. What do you think, Sam? Uh... Now when we see the goats, they are going to look small, but they are fully grown. They oh, love yeah, the to play are all and run pounds. It helps them not only determine dominance in their herd, but it also helps them mature physically. Huh. They do have round bellies. That's normal. They are ruminants, just like cattle. So that means they have multiple chambers in their stomachs, and that helps them digest the food they eat. They're just hanging out today. It's important that we note the relationship between the warden and the goats. This shows us that humans and animals can coexist peacefully. So we can provide animals like the goats with food and shelter. It's a bumpy and in ride, return, team. the goats supply us with milk that can be sold, consumed, or turned into cheese. It's also important that we do small but impactful things in our day-to-day -day lives, like shop with reusable shopping bags, use reusable water bottles and straws, recycle our one-time use plastics, aluminum cans, and electronics like we talked about earlier. Also, remember to shut the water off while you're brushing your teeth. And if you're running water, waiting for it to heat up, stick a container under there, collect it, and then use that to water your plants. Doing things like this helps ensure our animals and planet stay safe and stick around as long as possible for us and our future generations to learn about and enjoy. Now I'm gonna drop you all off where I picked you up, so bear with me as we make our way back up to that dock. Cool, Sam. Wonder if Caitlin's still there. <laughs> if you all would like to see more animals today, I highly recommend you check out Gorilla Falls. It's an easy hike, and you can see some real live gorillas. It's we super did, interesting. We did, didn't we, Sam? I think Caitlin will be there. And they there. have more than just She's gorillas over there. They have a you. different kind of zebra than we do. Their zebra is actually white with black stripes. They have another place where you can view the hippos. They have meerkats, naked mole rats, reptiles, yeah, fish, fish rats. birds. There's all kinds Ooh. of cool stuff over there to see, so definitely go and check it out. You can also hop on a train and head over to Rafiki's Planet Watch. There you can learn more about conservation and get an up close and personal look at some animals like the Nigerian dwarf goats. You can actually pet them over there if you want to. You can do the animation experience where an artist will teach you how to draw a Disney animal character. And our vet clinic is over there as well, so you can see where our animals get their checkups. Now, if you go through Gorilla Falls and you enjoy it, definitely head over to Asia. Over near Kali River Rapids is the Maharaja Jungle Trek. So it's a very similar go at your own pace walking trail, just like Gorilla Falls. Only they have bats, oh, gotta go under water the bridge, buffalo, now. Komodo dragons, mm -hmm. and tigers. I got so super cool. The trails are some of my favorite things to do. They're about a quarter of a mile long. They'll take about 15, 20 minutes to go through. They are wheelchair, ECV, and stroller accessible. It's nice and shady back in there. There's never any weight because it's just one continuous walk. And if you're a wilderness explorer, you can get all kinds of badges back in there as well. And if I do have any wilderness explorers, you are on the Simba 1. 
and where you'll go to get your badge is when you depart and you go down the ramp, turn right. Walk down that pathway a little bit, you're gonna see a small merchandise stand. Turn left and walk down that pathway a little bit, you'll see the person with the orange satchel and they will give you your safari badge. Hmm. Something else that you can do while you're here in Africa is go see the Festival think? of the Lion King. We did Those that, didn't every we? hour on the hour. The last one is at 5 o'clock. So many good songs to sing along we were with. Giraffes. The dancing is excellent. The costumes Bad. are beautiful. It's also indoors, so it's air conditioned. Yes. Another show you can go see is Finding Nemo, The Big Blue, and Beyond. Those shows are every hour on the half hour. The last one is at 4.30. That theater is oh, between Asia and Dino Land, USA. So if you're walking through Asia from Africa, it's going to be on your left-hand side. It's a huge theater. You can't miss it. It's also indoors. Also air-conditioned. It's a really unique show. Definitely worth the watch. Is this anybody's very first safari? Yeah, what well, welcome aboard. Everybody else, welcome back. Thank you all so much for joining us today. All right, this truck is going to take off, and then we will, we will be back up at our dock. If you want to, everybody say Jumbo to the warden. Jumbo! And say Jumbo to this warden. Jumbo! Jumbo. Friends, I do want to leave you all with one last Swahili phrase, and that is Kwaharini, which means Wah to go well with hope and intention that we will meet again. So Kwaharini, friends, go well, go wild, and make a difference out there. Again, my name is Ashley. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And if I had any bonus explorers one more time, you were on the Simba one. Yay. Please watch your hands, arms, feet, and legs as the doors on your right are sliding open. Enjoy okay, your Sam. day, everybody. Have fun and quaharini. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. All right, Sammy. Sammy. All right. Now we're good to get you off. Yay. What do you say? No, I'm over again, Sam. I'm so sorry. Say <laughs> hey, thank you. Strapping you. Um, I'm boinking. On that note. 